Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm just making some adjustments here. I guess it'll work. If anybody can't hear me, um, that means there's something wrong on your end. No, I'm joking. If you can't hear me, uh, let me know. There, Facebook, YouTube, you can uh, type stuff in. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a little informal. I don't want to get too comfortable, but I'm going to go ahead and hit record this. All right. Well, Facebook just fell. All right, we're going to try this again. All right, sorry about that. All right, so um, if you're tuning in, you may have seen my post uh, about this. This is actually uh, me launching into a podcast. And um, I wanted to go live. I've been wanting to go live because I just like the immediacy of it and also the interaction with you and uh also wanted to do a podcast i was like okay how do i bring all these things together and make the best use of my time so that uh, i can get this out there and um we can do both at the same time and get more content out there so you might be wondering oh and i just want to say so if it sounds like i'm talking on a podcast that's why anyway uh, if you're wondering where does the name come from, win or learn, uh, I can't take credit for that. Um, there's a, a rock musician, a singer by the name of uh, Maynard Keenan of the band Tool. Um, this is He's just an amazing guy. He's like a renaissance guy. He, uh, he's a rock singer, and he suddenly decided to start making wine, and of all places, uh, Arizona. When I heard this, I was like, Arizona? I didn't know they could do wine there. But it turns out there's a commercial winery in every single state in the U.S. I've even been to a winery in Rhode Island, and I've also been to a winery in uh, Hawaii. Um, I've made it a habit now, and even when I'm traveling, I like to go and, and check out uh, wineries wherever I go. I've even been to wineries in Vietnam. Uh, actually, not a, no, I didn't go to a winery. I went to a wine tasting. Uh, I had Vietnamese wine when I was in Vietnam. Anyway, um, so and I have been, to, his name is Maynard Keenan, the singer for Tool. Uh, he has a winery now in Arizona. I've been to it twice. Uh, he, he actually is a very accomplished winemaker. He's very good at what he does. And then he's also a very talented musician and, and an artist. And he also does Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So you layer these things on. These are like some of my favorite things. Uh, heavy metal, uh, wine, and then Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, what's not to like about all of those things. 
but what I, I, I saw a, a video series on him. It was about, I think it's called The Art of Work. I'm going to probably do a longer video about this. And uh, I'll go into more detail and I'll link those videos so you can find them. And yes, takeaways are coming from the Traffic and Conversion Summit. I just got back from that in San Diego. I will get into those in just a moment. I wanted to explain a little bit more about the name. So win or learn. In this video, uh, I wish I could remember the name of these videos because uh, what he's saying in these videos are, is so awesome. One of the things he says is that when he was in high school, he his father was a wrestling coach. Maynard Keenan's father was a wrestling coach. And so he, he was in the wrestling team and his father coached him. And what his father taught him is when you win, you actually don't learn that much. And if you think about that, think about all the successes that you've had, all the times that you, you could call a win. So it's not necessarily when you win a competition, but any success that you've had. A lot of times you don't really learn much when that happens. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, you know, it's just not part of, of the that end point when you succeed. When you really learn though is when you fail or when you lose. But the thing is, is if you think of it as a failure or a loss, you're likely not to try again. You're likely not to get back out there. So this was taught to uh, Maynard Keenan in the context of wrestling. And if you've done Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or you've done wrestling, you know you lose a lot. It's a very, very humbling thing. You're, uh, even people, even there, there might be people you think you're better than or you beat every time and then one day they beat you. It's just, it can be uh, really tough to, to deal with that. And so what his father taught him is you're either winning or you're learning. Don't think about it as losing. And this aligns very well with uh, the NLP presupposition that there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. So if you're failing, if, you're, if, you, succeed, if you didn't succeed at something, if you lost, it's just feedback. And so it's, it's a moment that you can learn something. And he took that approach. What, the reason why he was explaining this is he, took that, he takes that approach to life. I just thought that was so beautiful to think about life like that. You're either winning or you're learning. You never lose it. So when something doesn't go your way, uh, when you fail at something, um, it's not a loss. It's you've learned something new. All right. On to other things. I just I did just get back from the Traffic and Conversion Summit. If you don't know what that is, um, that is a digital marketing conference that happens every single year in San Diego, California. This was my second year. And I got to say, this one was much better uh, than last year. Not that last year was bad. Uh, last year was good as well. And uh, why was it so good? This year, it seemed like, and I'm, I'm sure this came from the feedback from the previous year, it seemed like a lot of these entrepreneurs, and you know, these are names that you know, like uh, Dean Graciosi, uh, Joe Polish, Frank Kern was there. Um, then there was uh, Rachel Hollis, who's not really like a digital marketer, but she's a, a content creator. Her book uh, just hit number two on the, the, on the bestseller list, uh, just, one notch below Michelle Obama, so it's, it's pretty good. Who else was there? Richard Branson was there. He didn't do. He just did a short interview. He didn't go. He didn't go into a whole lot of uh, details about marketing and, and personal development. But you can see what has made him a success, which is just that he he's really trying to solve like bigger and bigger problems. And you probably have heard that if you want to make more money, solve bigger problems. This guy is at the top. He solved. He's trying to solve climate change problem. Um, he, he's, this wonderful thing that he's doing now is uh, he's helping people who come out of jail uh, get a job. So his Virgin Airline, he, he, he looks for, to hire people who are right out of jail so he can give them training, give them hope. And not a single one has gone back to jail. Not a single one has been arrested. And so uh, just the things that he's working on, he's really an amazing guy. And uh, who else was there? Oh, uh, Jay Shetty. And uh, Brendan, I don't know if I'm even saying his name right. I know it's all over the place. Brendan Burkhardt or Burchard. Um, I wasn't too into those guys. And I don't know if I will be into their content, but what they presented at this Traffic and Conversion Summit uh, was amazing. They, they, they were willing to talk about their own struggles more so. The stuff that you, or at least I haven't seen in their advertising. I don't know what's in their content. I haven't bought any of their uh, trainings or any of their stuff, but we see a lot of advertising with these guys and they're not necessarily trying to cover up that they struggle and that they have frustrations. 
uh, but they're not putting that part out there. You don't see that on the advertisements. But here, this this uh, summit, they were doing that. They were going really deep into these things. And so, yeah, I know they're like uh, multi-millionaires or they're millionaires trying to see how they can get to being a multi-millionaire or they're multi-millionaires seeing about how they can get to become a billionaire. And it's not like you can really, not everybody can really relate to those frustrations, but actually if you boil it down, those frustrations are universal. Dean Graciosi had said something uh, really interesting he, when he was coming up, and it was weird seeing him, by the way, because I remember growing up seeing him on infomercials. I say growing up, I'm not sure if I saw him as early as when I was in high school, but definitely in college, I would see him on infomercials, and now he's right there on a stage not far from me. Um, but he said something really interesting. He said, you know, when, before I was made six figures and I was working toward it and I would meet mentors who were, who were teaching me. He said, it's, it's not that I literally thought this, but something close to it. Like they were just going to pull a little black box out and reveal like how they had gotten to where they are. And he said, you know, I never, that never happened. But he said, like, when I started making six figures, then I was going to the millionaire level and I had millionaire uh, uh, mentors and same thing. I was just thought that, you know, like they were going to pull out that black box and say, okay, here's how I did it. And here's all you need to know. And of course that never happened. And then this kept going on until he was actually meeting Richard Branson, who's a billionaire, uh, I believe, mul yeah, multi-billionaire. And same thing. He just kept expecting like these guys to have some sort of secret in their back pocket. And it, no, it's not like that. It's, it's you, you're constantly just, having to ascend to those levels and there's no like silver bullet. There's no secret. There's no, uh, what a lot of what's being sold out there. Like, it's just, you know, you do this one thing and it happens. It's, it's that constant, um, working toward it and that constant progression. And you, you kind of heard that same message throughout most of these speakers and, and just told in different ways. And so I, when I, when I was posting that I was there, I kept getting people saying, well, what, you know, what is your biggest takeaway? And um, I didn't realize how many of you out there in personal development are really interested in this stuff. And so uh, I, I put it out there a few times, hey, if you, if you are interested in this, I can start making videos about it because I think personal development and self-improvement really work hand in hand with entrepreneurship and being your own boss and really taking charge of your life. And at the same time, I don't want people to think that just because you have a job and you like your job and you want to keep your job, that if you really want to get into this stuff, you know, self-help and personal development, if you really want to improve yourself, you have to quit your job. It's, it's just not true. You, you decide what it is you enjoy, what it is that you want to do. If you enjoy the security of a job, then, then stick with it. I, I never really felt that secure in a job. So it all, it all depends on where you get your security from. I actually, I had many jobs before I had my own business and I didn't, I was very much, especially when I was younger, a uh, grass is greener kind of on the other side kind of person. I always thought, well, if this, this is going to be a better job, you know, and I, then things are going to be good. And then well, I'll, I'll get this other, I, I'll get a higher paying job and then things will be good. I'll get an office job and just kept thinking that. And every time I kept getting these jobs, it, no, it wasn't really, it wasn't really getting, I mean, it was getting better, of course, because there were more benefits, but I, I, I still felt a sense of insecurity because anybody could yank that away from me at any time. And uh, I kept thinking, well, you know, I really, I think if I own my own business, but I was thinking, well, but maybe I'll own my own business and then it won't be that way. It'll be the same way. Like I, I, I won't feel, I won't feel secure. And sure enough, my first business, which was, I started at the height of financial crisis in 2008 in Santa Cruz, California, where I knew nobody uh, and was, had just got, well, just gotten married, had two kids under the age of two. Uh, that's that's a really hard place to find yourself. So did that feel very freeing? Um, no, uh, it felt worse than a job because I was buried in work. I did so much work. I did more work when I had my own business than I had ever done before. I mean, sometimes it was like 80 hours a week. Um, but eventually you get to that other side. Eventually you get to the point where you have a lot more freedom. And I've since let that business go. And that's probably another video I'll do at some point, which is why I let go of a six-figure business that was mostly passive income. And when I when I did it, uh, a lot of people were they didn't want to come right out and say it, but they I could tell they were kind of like, oh, are you, sure, are you sure you want to do that? 
and yeah, I needed to um, because it had basically anchored me down, and and I, it was it was becoming a drag, more so an emotional drag than anything else. So my biggest takeaway, uh, well, I've written it down, and it doesn't look very very professional here. I could have gotten slides and a whiteboard. Actually, my whiteboard's over there, but. Um, I wanted to just sit down while we do this podcast, so I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this. I've got two streams going on. Let's see if I can make this. I'll do that. Get a look at it. The first thing is, the first part is get started. Um, that might seem obvious. Uh, let me let me, let me get some backstory about this. So when people started asking me what what was my biggest takeaway, I wanted to distill this down into a way that I that I understood it before I came and explained it to you. So this is not like somebody didn't on one of their presentations give this to me and say, here, here you go. Uh, this is what I'm teaching. Uh, this is something I created based on summing up like everything that I that I got from the, the summit um, is for so from a meta distance, not of course uh, there's so many details of everything. I've got a lots of notes on everything, but this is not, uh, this is more like the philosophy. This is more of the, the structure of the process that I'm getting into here. So I'm not going to be like giving you marketing tips and stuff like that, but we can, we can do a video about that as well if, if you're interested. So the most obvious thing is getting started. One thing I notice when I go to these summits is how many people are, and you have to do, you, um, the summit was not cheap. <laughs> Let me put it that way. The summit is not cheap. So everybody there has paid a lot of money to be there, but it still amazes me how many people haven't even gotten started. You know, for a lot of these people, they're digital marketers. They're they're they are all about learning how to uh, do Facebook ads and all these things for other clients, for people who have businesses that they they want to open and do digital marketing. Uh, then there's the people sort of like me who I have my own business and I sort of do my in-house marketing somewhat, and uh, I want to learn what's out there now, what's working really well. And it's also just really interesting being around these people and, and, and uh, soaking up their wisdom. Um, but a lot of people who show up to these things haven't even started their business. They haven't, um, whether that's a digital marketing business or whatever the personal business is. And I'm thinking to myself, man, that's a lot of money to pay for something you haven't even started. And I go to Vid, I've been to VidCon. If you're not familiar with VidCon, it's put on. It's now put on by YouTube. It wasn't originally put on by YouTube. So VidCon, it's a video conference, but it's digital video. It's not only YouTube. It's anything on digital video. So the uh, Facebook is there. Everybody's there. And the first year I went, and it shouldn't have surprised me, but I more than half the people there who were going to the creator panel. So there's different levels. There's community. There's creator, and there's industry. So I would follow in the creator. I'm not a big corporation looking to hire like a, an influencer. So um, on the creator level, which is a more expensive uh, entry fee, I could not believe how many people had not even started their YouTube channel yet. And there were sessions that would get full. And I couldn't, you know, if they get full, then there's a line outside the door. And if somebody walks out, then somebody can walk in. But they, you know, they're controlling it because of the fire marshal. And the ones that would fill up the fastest were any um, any uh, session that had something to do with like signing the sponsorship deal, signing the endorsement deal. So you know, these influencers are putting these videos out. You know, you take like Casey Neistat, one of the, the biggest vloggers out there, and you know he he could do something on like well how to how to navigate this, how to navigate signing on to uh, be sponsored to to do uh, video ads. And these things would fill up. And these people, more than half of them, had not even started their channel yet. So basically, they wanted to sign the deal before they even put out the, any content. And this would irritate me because I've, I've had a YouTube channel for a while. And I'm wanting to check these, these things out. I'm not really looking to do a sponsorship deal, but I'm interested in the business side of it. And I couldn't get into these, these sessions because they, they were so full. And these people hadn't even started. It's like, and I would ask them, I would be standing in line, I'd be saying, okay, hey, the, you know, what is your YouTube channel? Like, I haven't started yet. Like, oh, okay, I get it now. You want to figure everything out before you get started. So that's where I start with this. And uh, some people might say, well, what do your research first or you know, before you get started? 
and yeah, you want to do a little bit of that, but like take this podcast for for instance. Um, I didn't. I could have structured all of this better. Uh, my phone. <laughs> I'm going. I'm streaming from my Facebook channel or my Facebook page. Uh, fell, you know. So there, I, I could have had like so much more stuff just set up and ready to go. But I know that I could spend days, months, even years, just swimming in that and 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 the getting and and the, the getting started to get started. And that's where a lot of people are at. It, and it amazes me. It's just like, no, just get it out there. And uh, it's funny, uh, my girlfriend, I was telling her that uh, I was going to do this and she was like, okay, um, she was getting a little ner nervous. She was like, okay, make sure you show up, uh, not in your pajamas. And I'm like, when have I ever done lives in my pajamas? And she says, well, you've never done lives on Saturday morning. And I was like, okay, fair enough, but <laughs> I'm not going to show up in my pajamas. Uh, but I knew what she was doing. She's trying to help me prepare. She also works for me. Um, so... Uh, there could be endless preparation. I was like, you know, just screw it. I'm just going to jump in and start doing this. And this is, so this is what I'm doing. It's like, I'm not going to be in that analysis paralysis forever. I want to get started. I want to do this live stream. So, and I want to do this podcast. So I'm going to put this back up. All right. So you want to get started, put in the effort, trust the process, and then open to change and transformation. So this is, um, let's make sure my Facebook people can see this. And then here, okay, so let's talk about this. Let's break it down. So getting started, uh, the, the thing is, is that when you're getting started on a business, you're getting started on maybe new habits you want to have in your life, or you're even just getting started on a goal, just get started. Um, yes, you want your goals to be uh, specific, but a lot of times you don't have enough raw data to, to, to really start going for it just yet. You need, you need to get in there. So like, for example, I started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, last year, so I didn't have any goals going into that. I was just exploring it, and I don't, you know, I don't know what my skill level is going to be. I don't know how this all works. I just know that um, I want to fight people. No, <laughs> I wanted to wrestle with people. I wanted to do it because I, uh, I never really got the chance to do it, and I, it, it looked fun. So I just jump in. I'm not going to set a goal around it. I'm just the, the only objective here is to enjoy it and to get exercise. So I jump in and I start doing it. And then once I'm into it, that's the second part, put in the effort. So that's number two. It will take effort. And you, you got to bring that to it. So whether that's jujitsu, that's a goal, that's you're starting a new business. You can't just do the first step and get started and then say, oh, okay, well, I, I, I got started and it, it didn't work. Um, I didn't have a, a successful business. I didn't achieve the goal. So uh, I'm done. No, of course, you have to put in the effort. So the effort would be in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu case is you got to show up to practice. That's, you know, you got started. Sure, you crossed that threshold. You signed up. Now it's time to practice. And it's amazing to me. And, and uh, when I put trains out there, people will buy trainings. And uh, that's, they're getting started, but they never get into the effort of it. And I also see this, like I said, in the in conferences and summits, they show up to the conference, they show up to the summit, they take a lot of notes, they learn some really cool things. And, to, and in their mind, well, I've gotten started, but then they, they don't do anything. Uh, and so by the way, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, mention that I, ha I do have a membership program which uh, covers actually what we're covering right now. This is the next month. So if you're, in, if you're in my membership program, I will be covering this stuff in more detail uh, this coming month, uh, the fourth installment. <laughs> and, uh, and so actually I have a special going on, uh, $1 just to get started on the membership program. I should have linked it here, I didn't link it here. I will link it after. Um, my assistant's going to kill me. Okay. I will link it here from now until April 1st. Uh, you can get on, on the membership program starting for $1 because I want to, I want to make it easy for people to get started. So, uh, you can just get started for $1. Of course, it's not going to be $1, uh, every month after that. Uh, and this is where you, where you need to bring in the effort. And like I was saying, I see people buying trainings, and to them, they get stuff that's they're getting started, but they don't bring the effort to it. They don't follow up. I've, I can I can check my students' progress, and I can see a lot of times they haven't even touched it, but they feel good about having gotten started. But that's just 
of course, the beginning. So putting in the effort, showing up to do it, um, whatever that is, you, you have to put in the effort. And then the next part, and most people would think that this would come first before step three. The step three is trust the process. Now, why would I put step, why would I put this step here? Shouldn't you be trusting the process right from the beginning? Not necessarily. And when I was at the summit, I think I went to, I think it was six presentations every single day for three days. So that's 18 presentations, 18 nearly hour long presentations because some of them ran a little bit longer. They were supposed to be 45 minutes uh, per presentation and uh, they, they weren't, uh, no, they weren't all that way. So 18 presentations, all these people who show up to this, and like I said, it wasn't, it was not a cheap uh, summit. Uh, these people have to know what they're doing. They don't, they're not getting up on these stages pretending to be. This is not uh, an ad on, on Facebook or YouTube and you're wondering if the person rented that Ferrari or rented um, that mansion that they're in. Uh, no, these are the real deal people. They, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't make it this far uh, if they weren't. So they're up there. And the funny thing is, and I've heard more than one person say this, is, and it's not they would even ask questions to the presenter. They would say, Basically, you're telling me the exact opposite of the person's uh, presentation who I just I went to. Went to. It's like, uh, you know, the time to post videos is in the middle of the week. And then someone else says, no, the, the time to post videos is on Saturday. And then you have some people say, uh, you should be doing five blogs a week. And then some people say, just do one blog a, a, a week. So it, you get into all this contradictory information, and it's, it can be very hard sometimes to digest all of this and figure out what should your strategy be. Well, all of these processes work. That's not, the issue is not this, which one works and which one doesn't work. They all work. It's, you have to trust that process and, and go with that to see what, if it works for you or not. Some things are gonna work for you and some things aren't going, going to work for you. The way I liken it to is, even a, a skilled comedian, a comedian who's, who's you know, been doing comedy for 10 years, cannot necessarily take someone else's joke and make it work. They can't necessarily hear a joke from another comedian and go to their audience and make it work. It's a strange thing, even though they're well-practiced. It's just that some jokes are going to work for them and some jokes are not, they're not gonna be able to make it play. So when you're getting all these processes thrown at you, and I'm not just talking about marketing, I'm talking about NLP, I'm talking about all the, the range of personal development processes out there. You know, every, every time you see somebody advertising something, that's basically what they're advertising. They're saying, hey, this is what worked for me. Here's my process and it will work for you. And in most cases it will, if you trust the process, if you go with that process. So if you get started and you start putting in the effort once you've done those two steps, you're going to know whether or not you want to trust this process. You're going to know, is this for me or not? And some things are just going to, to work for you. I, I hear people doing stuff in marketing or even in NLP or in personal development. And I just go, I've tried it. It, it, it doesn't work for me. Uh, so I found something different. And but what you need to do when you decide to go with someone's process or to learn a process, or even if it's your own process that you're uh, planning and you're, you're, you're executing a goal, is you have to trust that process. And if you don't, you're gonna be taking stuff from here, you're gonna be going off the plan, you're gonna be grabbing this process or that person's process, whatever sounds good. And when it doesn't work, you're not gonna know why. You're not gonna be able to go back to the process and say, Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I went, I went, I zigged when I should have zagged. Or you're not going to know if the process is effective or not. You're not going to know if it was the process fault, is it the fault of the process, or was it your fault? So it's so so important to trust that process. So when I'm hearing all these presentations, uh, I've got a lot of notes, like I said, and I'm going to get started, and I'm going to do things here and there, and then once I get going, I'm going to go, oh, okay, I, this seems to be working for me. I'm going to go buy that person's uh, process and, and, go, and learn their stuff because that seems to make the most sense. And when I do, I'm going to follow it step by step by step. This is the, I'll give you an example with a swish pattern uh, in NLP. 
um, I couldn't make the switch pattern work. And so after going to several NLP trains, uh, like I'm having some technical problems. Okay, things are sort of sorted out. Okay. When I was learning the switch pattern, I had gone, I'd go to several NLP trains, several practitioner trains. I just wanted to keep learning from different teachers. And when they it would come time after a while, they would, it would come time to teach the switch pattern because it's a standard process you teach in the uh, practitioner training. I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, let's just kind of go through this thing. Switch pattern, okay, yeah, it doesn't work for me. Cool, all right, we're done with that. Let's move on to the next thing. And I just thought, okay, it's just one of those processes uh, that it, I, I had, it didn't work. Well, it turned out that even though I was learning this process and sometimes renowned NLP teachers, uh, they were teaching it incorrectly. And this was pointed out to me by one of my mentors, Steve Andreas, uh, who unfortunately passed away this past fall. And there was one thing, one thing I wasn't doing that uh, when, when he pointed this out to me and I, I changed it, boom, suddenly it, it worked. And uh, that's one of the first videos I ever did. It was how to do the switch pattern properly. It's also one of uh, my most watched videos. And um, so what, what, what am I getting at in all this? Uh, that process, the way it was being taught, was working for people. It wasn't working for me. And uh, there was just one step difference, one step difference. And it was how the Andreas is teaching versus how a lot of other people are teaching it. And it's not necessarily that one is right or wrong, but you need to understand what that difference is. And I couldn't have gotten that had I not trusted that process first few times and then found out later that why, why I was doing it wrong and changing that one thing. And then it started working for me. But it, it worked for some people before that. Anyway, I can go on and on about uh, these patterns and uh, NLP processes. Uh, I want to move on to the fourth step because I've only got about 15 minutes left here. So the fourth step is open to change and transformation. And I, you know, this is, uh, let me put this back up here so you can see, open to, open to change and transformation. And this is so important because most of us have this backwards. Most of us are, most of us are thinking, okay, all right, I'm willing to get started and I'm willing to put in the effort and I'm willing to trust the process and it's not happening. So what is that about? Let me, let me, this is, uh, so this is, uh, this is gold here. And this is something I have to remind myself a lot of. More effort at this point, more effort is not going to get you there. More effort, you'll see incremental improvements. But more effort is not you know, going to ultimately get you where you want to go. I've had to learn this lesson so many times because it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm moving toward my goal, I've gotten started, I'm putting in the effort, I'm trusting the process, and I'm still, the, the, the change in the transfer, or the, the thing that I want, the goal that I want to achieve, is still just dragging on, dragging on. I just I can't, I can't seem to get there fast enough. And I'll start thinking to myself, well, okay, I'll put an extra 10 hours of work in a week to get there, I'll do this or I'll do that. It's not in the effort. This last and final stage is not in more effort. And if you're at that point, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you feel like you've, you're putting all the effort that you can. And so one thing also to remember is uh, maximum is not as good as optimal. So if you're putting the maximum amount of effort in, that doesn't mean you're getting closer to what you want. That just means you're wearing yourself out. The optimal effort in, putting the optimal effort in is putting the, you're finding that sweet spot. You're finding out well, how much effort does it really take to get the most out of this. And I, uh, since this is Life Master's Gym, I like to use um, gym metaphors. People go to the gym, and this happened to me a lot too, because I tend to be a bit obsessive about the things that I enjoy doing. People go to the gym, and they want to gain strength, and they want to, they want to make their muscles bigger. And so they, they go, it gets addictive. They go, oh, well, I, I guess I need to put more effort in. I need to work out harder. And so they, they go from uh, maybe working out two days a week to working out three days a week. And then they're, they're not seeing the gains that they want, so they go to four days a week. Then they go to five days a week. Then they start seeing their gains diminish. There's diminishing returns. And then it gets even worse. They start going backwards. 
And all the while they're thinking, well, I guess I just need to put more effort in. And this is where uh, workaholism uh, can come from. More effort's not going to get you there at this point. In fact, sometimes you have to pull back and less effort is actually better. Like I said, you find what's optimal. So if you're putting in less effort at this point, how are you going to get to where you want to be? Or achieve what it is that you want to achieve? And you know, it's a uh, personal goal, like a self-improvement goal, or is that an external or an external goal? You have to open yourself to changing. So what a lot of people are expecting is that you know, if I get started, I put in the effort, and I trust the process, this thing is just going to show up on my doorstep. And sometimes that actually works. Sometimes that does. Um, it, you might have already had whatever the internal stuff you needed to get there. You were just missing the first three steps. So that does happen. I don't want to say that it doesn't. But for if you've been challenging yourself in this area for a long time and, and you're still not getting there, most likely this is when you need to let go more and, and allow yourself to change and transform. And this is what's beautiful about transformation. And you can have small transformations and you can have big transformations. Um, I had a, a major one when I was uh, a student in the NLP Master Practitioner training. And what I was not willing to admit to myself, some of my worst fears, I had to finally accept. And I knew when I did this, that I was going to change. And I got right up to that threshold and I realized if I did not change, I did not open myself to change and transformation, I was just gonna go back into the same miserable existence that I was living and I would be stuck there. And so I allowed myself to change, I allowed myself to transform and it was amazing how fast things showed up after that. And then it still took some things a while to, to show up, but. When you're when you're at that point, when you when it's really about getting something big, and that could be you know, starting your own business, that could be uh, losing a lot of weight and getting getting healthy, you have to change as a person, and and that's what's scary for a lot of people, and that's why they get that close and then they quit. Um, Fear of success. I wasn't sure if I wanted to get on this so long. <laughs> That's why I paused and was thinking about it. Um, I always get a lot of flack when I go into this. A lot of people get really upset because they're really invested in this idea of I fear success and that's why I'm not successful. And that's where this piece comes in. This is right around this time of the, the transformation, the change, is when people start thinking, uh, oh, well, the reason why I don't have what I want is because I fear success. And I really hate it. I hate it when people perpetuate this idea if they're a teacher or a self-help guru because really what they're doing is they're throwing or they're, they're introducing more noise to an already noisy situation. They're introducing a problem that does not exist. So you can pay them indefinitely to solve it because they will never be solved. You can have pro solve a problem that doesn't exist. So is there a problem happening? Absolutely. If you're at that point, you're saying, uh, you know, I, I fear my success and that's why I'm not getting what I want. Is there a problem? Yes, I'm not denying. I'm not saying you don't have something to work through. You have an issue to work through, but it's not your fear of success. Let go of that idea. If uh, if it were about that, you would just go and get it. You know, if you're hungry and you have a plate of food in front of you, you're going to eat it. You're not going to step back and go, I don't know if I have the motivation for that. Or, I, you know, I, I don't know. Do I? I, I think I fear being full. It's ridiculous. You would not do that. So what fear of success is, it's really fear of transformation. It's fear of change. And a lot of people are afraid of fear, I mean, afraid of change and transformation so much that they will, they, you know, what they're experiencing now, it, even though it's, it might not feel good because they're not where they want to be, at least they're familiar with it. And that is what keeps a lot of people from changing and transforming that final step to getting what they want. And as a coach, because I do a lot of coaching, uh, I, I walk up to that threshold with, with my clients a lot of times. And sometimes they're just not ready and I don't want to push them. So I have to just back off and let them go. Sometimes they're ready and it, and it happens. I have a student, uh, it's hard to call him a student anymore. He's becoming more contemporary 
Uh, his name's Peter. Uh, you might have seen him post stuff. Peter Schwartz, who's also a coach. Um, that was a guy who was ready. <laughs> he wasn't afraid. Uh, when he came to me, he wasn't, he was not in a state of desperation, but he was, he, you could tell it was like he knew he, he, what he could be, but he just wasn't quite there and he just needed some help getting there. And it was just in a few months, he rapidly changed his life. Total transformation. He was ready. Uh, so some people are just ready, but other people, sometimes I can tell they're ready, but they don't know it yet. And that's the time when I kind of nudge them as a coach over that threshold. And when they get to the other side, they thank me for it uh, because they knew they, they weren't going to, they weren't going to quite go there themselves. Maybe later on when they got really fed up, but uh, I've had to tell people like, Hey, this is what you came to me for. If you're, if you're going to go back now, what's the point of all of the work we've been doing? So you know, let's go. Um, so they're, they're all different types, but I don't want to ever push anybody because like really push somebody uh, because then I usually makes them not want to continue the process because then you're introducing some pain into it. So you can be careful with that. If your coaches out there listening to this, I'm not saying, you know, just push your clients really hard. No, you got to know when the timing is right. So find out where you are in this process. You know, have you, is it that you haven't even gotten started yet? Get started. And you don't, here's the thing. You do not have to have it all figured out. You do not have to even have to have a process. Take this, this, what I'm doing here, I just decided I wanted to go live every Saturday morning. And I also was going to, you know, I'm going to use this for my podcast. And I didn't have everything figured out. I don't have the, the podcast thing figured out. I miss putting the links in these videos. Um, so obviously this, you know, I, there's just so much stuff that I don't have to figure out. But I, like, I'm not going to let that stop me. I, I want to get started. I'm, I'm excited to get started. Let's just go. So uh, it, you know, here we are. And then put in the effort. You don't just do one the first step and then and then back away. That's what so many people do. Uh, a lot of people crash and burn at that first step. They they feel good about themselves because they bought that training. They feel good about themselves because they bought that gym membership. Um, they feel good about themselves because you know they took the first step or whatever their their goal is, and then they just I'll do anything after that. It's, why why get started if you're not going to put in the effort? So put in the effort. And then sort this thing out. You put in the effort and you realize, okay, I need a process here. I, I, need, I need some guidance here. I need some uh, a pathway to follow uh, for a little while. And so you find that. And like I said, my membership program, if you're serious about this, if you're serious about self-improvement and uh, doing the work, that's what my membership program is. It's the process. Um, I, you know, I can't make you start and I can't make you put the effort in. What I provide for you, though, in the membership program is the process. So you find a process and you just give yourself to that process. Is it the right process? Can there be tweaks and changes made to it? Absolutely, always, because uh, you're bigger than the process. You're a human being, you're living, you're breathing, you're changing. So uh, the process is static, but uh, it's something to grab onto, something to follow. And then you adjust, you know, you, you make the adjustments to the process to suit you later, but trust it first. It's like you're putting together a piece of Ikea furniture. Uh, trust the manual. Look at the manual. Don't try to put it together by yourself. Um, people who do that drive me crazy. Now, I always do step-by-step -step through the manual, and then if for some reason, and it happens, the manual has it incorrectly or inaccurately, then by that time, I can sort of figure out how to put the piece of furniture together the rest of the way. So uh, that's what you're looking for, you know. Find a process. It's, nothing's going to be perfect, um, but you have to you have to bring the effort to it. You have to put the effort into it. The final process that you that you trust and you feel like uh, will work for you, and then you're going you're going to walk up right to that threshold. You will get to that point, and this is where the resistance often really comes up. You go, okay, I'm almost there, and maybe I should just turn back, or maybe this, or maybe that, and that's that's the resistance to change and transformation. But the only way you're going to get there is by that change and transformation. There's a guy who I learned a lot from uh, digital marketing, and he, again, he's married to the self-improvement and personal development. His name is James Wenmore. And I don't know if he was the first to say this. He might not have been. He was the first person that I heard it from. And he said, what got you here will not get you there. And that can actually, you can apply that to many things. But what I apply it to is, yeah, if you're not where you want to be, it's not because you need to arrange everything around you 
to be more to your liking. No, it's time for you to change. It's time for you to transform. Um, I also have a program on that, but the enrollment's not open right now. Uh, that's transforming yourself. It's actually how to go into how you structure your reality, more, so, more specifically your identity, and changing that. And it's the strangest thing. It's the most extraordinary thing. And I've, I've done it with many coaching clients, and then I have a lot of people who are in the training. It, it's just amazing. When you change at the identity level, the things around you appear to change. It appears that your world has changed, but no, it's your reality is a projection. It's a projection onto, I'm sure this objective reality, but we won't ever know it because it always comes in through subjectively, through our subjective filters. And then we project that back onto the world around us. Uh, when you change at the identity level, that projection changes. So it appears as though your reality around you is changing. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing when that happens. It, it, I have had clients go, when I was coaching them, like, they go, is this real? Like, a, 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 or is it, is it going to stay this way? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it will stick as long as there's no resistance, or not that there's no resistance, but if there's any resistance coming up to that change, you have to deal with it. You have to address it. You have to integrate that resistance because if you don't, it will drag you down eventually. And that's where we get into the, the things like self-sabotage where you're, you're almost to your goal and then you, you just throw it all away. Okay, let's see. I only have a few minutes left. I can't believe I just, that went by for me like uh, a matter of moments. Um, let's see if I need some questions in a few minutes. Seeing a lot of cool statements, but no questions. How can I get rid of addiction? Hmm. I have something to say about that. Okay. I'm only seeing one question. Uh, how do I get rid of addiction? Okay, I can't really tell you how to get rid of addiction on I can give you a different perspective of it. Um, and actually, this is interesting because um, there's a guy named Joe Polish. If you're in the marketing, you know who he is. He's, a, he's kind of a legend in the game. Um, he said this, and I was, being at the summit, I just knew I was in the right place because these people were amazing. Um, and uh, like I said, marrying entrepreneurship with personal development, it's so rewarding. So he said, and he, he suffered, Joe Polish has suffered uh, tremendous addiction uh, uh, yeah, pretty serious uh, years ago though. And he said, uh, addiction is you're, you're, you're trying to, I'm, I'm gonna totally, I'm totally paraphrasing this because I don't remember his exact words, but addiction is uh, part of you trying to do something good for you. It, and, and that we, we say that all behavior, in NLP we say all behavior comes from a positive intent. And he didn't say it like that, but that's I think what he was uh, getting at. Uh, you're, you know, the addiction is your attempt to do something very positive for yourself. Now, the behavior can be destructive. The behavior can can be bad or whatever you want to call it, uh, or it can be, you know, unhealthy. But it, when you have a when you have an addiction, it's try take the approach that there's a positive intent behind that addiction, and what is happening is that intent is not integrated with the rest of you. So instead of going to therapy, people do, you know, have an addiction and that's the way that they deal with uh, painful emotions. But if they would come to grips with that, with those emotions, all the pain and integrate that, that's a scary, that's a scary process. Not a pain, not necessarily, well, it can be painful, but it's, it's a scary process because you're like, well, if I let all this stuff out, will it take over me? That's the, the best way that I can explain it in my own experience. If I, if I face these fears, if I open myself to seeing what these fears are, because you have to know what they are before you integrate them, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to be overcome and overwhelmed and overtaken taken by these fears? And there might even be fears of like, you know, suicide and, and those, those kinds of things. So that's why you want to have like a therapist. If you're, if you're, if you really have an addiction, go to a therapist, don't go to a coach, uh, unless the coach is certified in, in uh, therapy or, or an addiction coach who has the credibility behind them. And, uh, but 
if you're in a, if you're in an addiction and there's different levels of addiction, my younger brother uh, died of a drug overdose. He was addicted for years. Um, so I've seen various levels of addiction. Uh, if you're suffering from a, an addiction, first of all, get help. Um, if it's not a one that's, you know, if it's like, I don't know, I think of a, a mild addiction, uh, cigarette smoking is what we often, often consider a mild addiction. Um, I mean, not on the level of addiction, but you know, you, you're not, uh, you can function in life. You can go, you can work a job and you can provide for your family and, and still smoke, but you're addicted. Uh, know that this, there, that what drives you to do that is a positive part of you. It's not a part of you to be shunned. It's not a part of you to, to try to get rid of. It's going to take bringing that part of you into the light, finding out what its positive intent is for you. And another word for positive intent is value. And though it might seem like sometimes your values conflict, at the highest level, your values don't conflict. They integrate nicely together. So it's about really getting in touch with that highest value. What, what is that addiction? What is that behavior trying to, to fulfill? And if you go deep enough with this, you'll find that it does not contradict with any other value or intent within you. And so when you find that place, it becomes much, much easier to integrate it. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Looking to learn NLP and apply it and using your course, having difficulty applying it in everyday life. Uh, what, then I would ask you, which course are you in? And all of my courses have uh, Facebook pages, private Facebook pages, um, or fa Facebook groups, I should say. So if you're having trouble, post in that group, um, and then we're gonna, we'll work on it. So I give ongoing support for all of my trainings, including the membership program. And I also have a private Facebook group that doesn't require uh, purchase of a product. Um, it's out there. Um, you can find it. And what I can do, I can post the membership training. So the membership program is really about applying NLP. So some people aren't as interested in, they're not as geeky as I am. And a lot of us are. Some of us are just like total geeks about NLP. And, uh, but there's a lot of people who aren't. There's a lot of people who are just interested in, um, in applying it. And that's fine. And uh, that's why I created the membership program. It's, uh, it's here we go. I'm gonna post the membership program right there. Um, it's about applying uh, NLP directly. And I don't go into all of the, in the nuts and bolts of, um, of how it all works. If you're a coach, you want to know how it works because you're going to get in situations with clients who are going to be totally different than what you were expecting. And um, you're going to need to know how it works so that you can adapt and change. But you don't, if you want the benefits of NLP without having to take the time to learn it, um, the membership program is really a great program for that. So, yeah. This other way, so I'm not so scattered while I'm trying to do this and talk at the same time. I've already posted it from the YouTube. So, like I said, right now we're I'm doing this promotion where I'm just you can get started uh, for a dollar. And I just the reason I do that is I just want to make it easy for people to, to get started. And uh, so just jump in. And within a month, so there's nothing magical that's going to happen in that month. Like it's not like you're going to you know, go through a full transformation in the first month. And uh, but what you are going to get is you're going to get a taste of what the membership program is like, and you're going to see how you do ongoing support. And uh, I do group coaching calls. You get a lesson every month. Um, you also get a hypnotic induction. A lot of people like that. It's, it's not like a meditation, but it's a hypnotic induction. I use hypnotic languaging. And uh, basically, every, there's a new hypnotic induction for every lesson because I want you to get it on the unconscious level as well as the conscious level. So you're, you're doing, you're watching the videos, you're doing the exercises that I give you, and then uh, once a day or twice a day, you can listen to that hypnotic induction and get it really deep 
in the unconscious. It's really cool. And then once a month, I, I, I'll do a private group coaching call, kind of like this, but more interactive. Uh, we do it on Zoom. So uh, that $1 promotion is not going to last. That, we're, we're shutting that down at the end of this month. Um, it'll go away uh, by April 1st. So uh, I just posted the links in the uh, chat boxes. Uh, so if you see a weird link pop up, a weird link, it'll look weird to me. That's what that is. Let's see, some people are posting more. Uh, so what am I out with on this? I think that's, it looks like, yeah, salt, but I think you meant the salt. Um, I don't actually know the salt uh, theory. I mean, I guess I do because I've experienced it. I don't I wouldn't say I know it, no. Um, but there's definitely a lot of gestalt, uh, or NLP took a lot from gestalt. Um, so I don't know. I'm not much of a theory guy when it comes to that sort of stuff. I'm more of a practical uh, practice application guy. I like philosophy and theory, but I'm, I've moved away from that uh, more and more. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I have, we have the gym concept. It's because it's not it's, it's not going to all happen in theory. It's important, but it's not going to all happen in theory. It's it's more about the practical application of things. It's like going to the gym. Yeah, you need to know how to work out, uh, but it's not going to happen until you get in there and you start. Yeah, you actually start doing it. Let's see. If someone's in a membership program and they're having a lot of positive benefits, you don't have anyone to practice with. Well, you don't really need to practice with anyone. And there's not exercises that have to be done to practice. But you, let's see. I'm wondering if you're in my practitioner program. It's not the membership program. The membership program doesn't require that you practice anyone, but it's great if you have an accountability partner. In fact, we're, I was just talking with someone yesterday about uh, putting that together, helping people find accountability partners in a group. What do I think about the new code of NLP? Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, let's see. So let's see what you guys are asking. Okay, new code, I don't know. I like to, I just use what works. Uh, John Grinder is a genius. So is Richard Bandler. Um, they're very difficult people. Um, I've met both of them. John Grinder lives in the same town as me. I've seen him at, I saw him at the grocery store. I've seen him at uh, the rock climbing place uh, in, in here. I've talked to him. We've had harsh email exchanges, to put it politely. So I don't know. I mean, new code is good. It's, um, I'm also friends with Judith Delosier. She helped. She was married to John Grinder, not anymore, but she was, and she helped develop the new code. So as far as I can tell, by the time I got into NLP training, the new code was um, infused into it. Unless you're training with Bandler, then you know you might not get all of that new code stuff. Any recommendations on books? Well, if it's NLP books, anything by the Andreases, whether that's Connie Ray Andreas or Steve Andreas, um, or sometimes they wrote books together. Uh, Mark Andreas has written a few books. Unfortunately, I have not read them. Uh, Mark's my friend. And uh, he's given me his books, and I feel bad because I've never read any of his books. Uh, he loosely uses NLP in some of the books. It's not a, they're not um, NLP books so much, but they're, a lot of them are therapeutic. Uh, so as far as NLP books, I would say any, anything by the, uh, the Andreases. And uh, as far as some stuff outside of NLP, anything by, by Robert Greene, uh, especially his latest one, The Laws of Human Nature, um, it, it, that's an extraordinary book. Um, everything that Robert Greene puts out is, is absolutely amazing. Let's see. Anything else? One of the ways to change in, images in your mind, just change them. Yeah, just like, I know it might sound uh, uh, a little too easy. Well, in, in some regard, changing the images in your mind, you do have control over this. So you might, they might take some practice if, it, if you're coming up against some resistance. Um, that's a really good question <laughs> to cover right now. Uh, go to the private Facebook group that you can join without buying a product, or if you're in one of my trainings, um, go there and ask me that question. I'm going to ask you a lot more questions to find out what's going on. Um, I don't really have time to cover that right now. Okay. 
So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I'm going to do this uh, every Saturday morning. Uh, I'm going to go at various times. I'm, I'm right at an hour right now. Um, I won't always be doing every single Saturday morning. I really love to travel. So sometimes my travel will break into that. Uh, I'm going to Eastern Europe um, at the end of this month. So that's going to be tricky to figure out how, how we can still do this. Uh, I might have to change. I might have to move days around. But in general, I'll be here doing this every Saturday morning. I'll be Sometimes it'll probably be just only 20 minutes. Sometimes it'll be an hour. And you can find me on Facebook or you can find me here on, on YouTube. I keep focusing more on the YouTube. Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> um, and then, uh, if, like I mentioned, there's a podcast that I'm going to be working on. Don't go looking for it. It's not out there yet um, as of right now. Well, some of you might be watching this video much later. But as of right now, um, February, no, March, is it March 3rd? March 3rd, uh, there's no podcast right now. Uh, there will be, so it's coming up. And then if you're interested in the membership program, like I said, uh, it's super easy to get started. You can check it out for a month for just a dollar and then uh, find out if that's the process you're ready to trust. And uh, there's an ongoing support. There's a Facebook uh, group for it and you get lessons every single month along with hypnotic induction. And am I forgetting anything? Uh, people have been asking about my practitioner training, when am I opening enrollment for it? It will be soon. Let me just put it that way. So uh, you can get on the waiting list for that if you go to the NLP, I'm sorry, lifemasterygym.com. I just changed the name uh, Life Mastery to Life Mastery Gym. So sometimes I still say nlpgym.com uh, or nlp-gym.com. But it's lifemasterygym.com. There's a place where it says courses on the tab at the top. Click on that. And you'll see all the courses I offer. And enrollment is not open for the practitioner training right now, nor is it for transforming yourself, but you can get on the waiting list. And you'll be notified uh, when that does happen. Okay. The same as framing. Uh, well, I mean, think about it. You can frame an image, and that usually does change the meaning of it. Um, so anyway, like I said, person who's still asking more questions about changing images just go to the group and I can we can interact a little bit more there I'm, I'm running out of time now um, someone's saying help fear is crippling uh, I'm gonna refer you again to the uh, to the Facebook group that's where we can uh, unpack some of these things so anyway thank you for uh, being on uh, for joining us for this and I will see you next Saturday morning Take care, everybody.